Ora, o nosso próximo orador, então, está a ver em Portugal desde 2013, vai fazer o seu toque em inglês, tendo como base o propósito de ter um admin do OPS mais simples e intuitivo, e vai falar, a CP desse tema vai falar sobre o tema, a de postar, a taxonomia e tudo isso, que vai ser uma apresentação muito interessante. So, our next guest will be talking on how to create a simpler and more intuitive admin UI. I thought the current admin UI was supposed to be user friendly already, but apparently uh, not. And of course, uh, if your background is in branding and marketing, you probably agree with Alexander. I, will, uh, I don't think I, I ask you how to pronounce your last name. It should be. Okay, good morning everyone. I hope you awake after the first talk. And uh, I will be talking about the interfaces and uh, uh, using WordPress as the CMF, the management framework. Uh, it means that we are not talking about the blogs, it's more about B2B or business websites and that's why uh, I'm talking about approach and the rules how to create the let's say easy to use interface for the final user which is not you as a developer which is your most probably client so are there any agency owners or business owners? okay cool and are there any Content managers that are doing with the main WordPress installations, Dylan, and uh, do you like all the installations equally, or do you prefer some? <laughs> okay. Uh, so we need to define what is a good user interface uh, and what makes it good. And uh, there is a definition uh, about the good interface that allows the user to do the things both efficiently and effectively. Uh, you know the difference, by the way. Everyone knows. There is, it's not so obvious. Uh, and uh, without a distraction. And uh, there are three golden rules of the good interface. They all defined Pretty, pretty well on the many talks and uh, uh, I a bit uh, changed the, the words of, the, of them and uh, adopted for the modern world and the first one is the reduced cognitive load that means uh, you probably know the uh, definition don't make people think which is, can, comes from the Steve Krug book don't make me think. And uh, that basically means that if you do something that uh, causes people to struggle, they will most likely leave, hate, or whatever, they will not be satisfied. And if there is no cognitive tension, if there is no uh, way to struggle with your interface, people will be more satisfied and uh, uh, there is a good example not from the digital interfaces imagine your interaction with the bank what is the good interaction with the bank it's something that doesn't cause you any errors struggles and uh, you don't get into the holidays uh, with the pocket card because of the band so that's a good user experience and uh, it's a good Communication interface, whatever you call it. And uh, the second rule is uh, make everything, in this case interface, consistent. That means everything stays in the same place uh, all the time, and also it is obvious where we can find things. And uh, in terms of the business websites interfaces, that means that your content manager, owner of the website, will be able to find. Uh, anything in the admin area easily. So, like, we have a blog, news, team, contacts on the front end, and basically the ETL situation will be to create the same structure on the back end, or to use 
front-end editor, which is a doubtful thing sometimes. And the third thing is keys. Everyone knows what is keys. Keep it simple, stupid. No, it's not about, it's not Virginish. <laughs> okay, uh, and very important thing, keep it simple and stupid, not only applies to your user, it also applies to you as a developer. Do not over-exaggerate things where it's not necessary. Uh, keep it simple, keep it useful, uh, make it really like straightforward, be kiss, not hard one. And I will show you some examples that's uh, basically it. I, as a developer, uh, got into WordPress like seven or six years ago. Uh, before that, I was working with the UX design, front end development, and so on. And uh, then uh, I discovered WordPress. At that time, there were no like page builders, they were just emerging. Uh, there were no really uh, easy to use uh, custom meta fields uh, plugins. So that is a bit dumb example, I would say, for, for nowadays. I remember it's quite like six years old. Uh, it's a single page website, right? Uh, so basically, what do you think you would do to make that, that thing uh, in terms of the, of the interface? And uh, there are principles uh, that I mentioned uh, that I have applied here. Uh, first of all, all the sections are in the in the sections uh, custom post type, and uh, we can rearrange them. For example, boom, and it will change there, of course. And that's uh, what 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 the part of the keeping it simple, right? And also, uh, for example, the, ser the services are just having, remember that's like the really old thing, don't think that that is a great interface, that's just the first implication of the principles. Uh, but, for example, here are the products, right, that we see here, uh, and each product have a custom meta boxes which were made basically in the functions, and uh, that's, that's the thing uh, which I consider uh, like more useful uh, because we have the atomic information that is displayed on the front end and uh, it is more or less uh, consistent here and it's the same consistent and atomic in the admin area so you don't have like a block which will break the things out and you don't have a page builders uh, which uh, generating basically a lot of uh, unnecessary code in the most cases. So, that's the first example, remember. Then, uh, now I should apologize because the rest of examples will be in, uh, it means will be in Russian, uh, but you don't need to read the text, you just need to uh, see the image and uh, to see the, the stuff on the, on the front end in, the case, in that case. Uh, there was an MVP startup for uh, like the aggregator of hotels uh, in different uh, places and uh, at that point it's very important what was referred about the custom pages, taxonomies and so on. When we start to think about such type of website in terms of the informational architecture we need to define which things will be uh, our custom posts, like in that case there are articles, there are, uh, they call it cards, uh, which basically means uh, the hotel card, and there are uh, custom landings for the, let's say, special projects. And I will show you an example of the article, uh, that's the article page, it is uh, Google translated, so don't be scared. Uh, and it's pretty huge, and uh, I want you to think about how you would make a thing like that uh, four years ago. It, it basically looks like more or less just a plain uh, content area, right? But have you noticed one thing? 
very much the one thing that's here, here, are the sections which are the definition of those sections. And uh, basically, when you click on them, it's like the modern media uh, approach. When you click on them, you get to the straight to the point. And those things are also highlighted on the front end. So you basically cannot grab them from the content. You should define them as atomic pieces. And when it comes to the backend part, it has the same uh, structure with atomic pieces. We only have a definition here like the excerpt. Then we have uh, show it on the main page, the icon. You might see that on the front, page, front end. And then uh, a lot of things which define the article. And, uh, yep, go ahead. Here, uh, that is made with the flexible and repeated fields. That means that you can at any time edit any type of the content in any place, rearrange them, uh, switch them, and uh, ch basically change the stuff. So I'll show you. Okay, yeah. Uh, so here, those things, those titles, are going from here, and uh, here is the content. Like here is the excerpt that we have seen on top. Here is the that content. Here is the gallery, and each gallery piece have a description, and uh, that implies the total custom frontend team, of course, and uh, the custom flexible admin area and. Uh, here it's important to understand uh, that this will be supported by real people and uh, it might seem like a bit too complicated but the thing is the atomic pieces of the information that are uh, that we are able to rearrange and people are able to uh, maintain them easily and consistently are in fact saving time for the businesses because uh, if the interface is like badly made then uh, on each edit, on each new article edition, uh, people will spend like 5, 10, 15 minutes extra, and that will cost you money or time or whatever. Uh, another example uh, displays the other approach. Here's the Fedin website, and the thing is, here the content is also pretty like magazine in a magazine style with a lot of graphics and uh, with uh, uh, some custom things and uh, you, as you see the image is also uh, customly masked and uh, here is the demonstration of the other thing don't don't uh, uh, make a community flow for your user because in that case the person that contain that website is absolutely like no tech in any way and uh, that's why this interface uses a lot of the WordPress core functionality. Like everything that we have seen there with the complex, uh, complex galleries on the full screen are using basically the default WordPress uh, gallery shot code. And the images are automatically cropped, automatically uh, placed into the place and so on. And the uh, most beautiful thing here uh, is the code that you make to make a front-end part. Imagine, that is the archive of the all weddings, all projects. You see, there's like 20, 30 lines of code. And uh, it is the code of the single page that you have seen with all those. I will show it in more details. Uh, here we have like all those things, all those atomic pieces, right? Uh, I go basically, and here are the galleries, like some stuff like that, and here's the editor. So uh, this is all atomized and is maintained to be as simple as possible for the final user, which is not expert at all, and uh, which have a bit of experience. 
with the uh, default WordPress functionality with the blog posts and uh, that's why it is maintained to represent his experience, his, is his life and uh, here is what, what we see uh, which is totally custom on the, on the front of the part, right? So, uh, one more example, are you still awake? Is it interesting at all? And uh, okay, that last example is the like most complex by now I think, uh, and uh, it represents the let's say the landing page for the particular single event uh, of the um, cultural and uh, art artistic venue in the center of Moscow. And uh, that requires not scrolling in the presentation, but showing you on, on, on the on the live website. Uh, here is the theme, how it looks like on the web, and uh, it is uh, it is Google translated for your convenience, so you can see the things. And uh, here you see a lot of custom stuff. Like it's like a magazine, ready mag, layout, and whatever, right? Right? And uh, how we de how do we deal with that? And uh, also, there are related uh, items from the WooCommerce store. Uh, how do we, how do we deal with that? Basically, right? And uh, also, it implies the uh, custom fields, custom uh, custom posts with custom taxonomies. Uh, here we see, we have a taxonomy. Defining the type of the event, uh, which will be displayed, of course, on the front end, and which will be used for the filtering on top of the things. If here we go, uh, there is a filter for all type of events, and uh, you just choose it uh, here, not not like in the or helming the thing, and you de uh, you. Uh, define that person could select only one thing because you can't have the single event uh, which will be at the concert and, concert and the lecture at the same time and uh, with a, any custom taxonomy you base uh, by default able to select several uh, values for the taxonomy and uh, there is also a great and uh, very useful uh, multilingual thing uh, I wouldn't touch it in, in details by now because it's, uh, but it's the important thing about the, how to make easy to use multilingual website just just a button which switches basically all the content which does require translation but does not switch the things that does not require translation here's the dates uh, the definition if it's one day or several days and the type of the, of the event they are not switched the images are not switched they are maintained and here, uh, here this example, we can change the, what we have seen there, uh, the backgrounds, uh, we can change if we should, if it is the uh, event with the proper landing page or not, and all the things that we have seen there uh, of the, oops, sorry, uh, of the like magazine and ready mag type of layout, uh, you can see it here, you can basically edit anything like yeah, there are predefined pieces you can make wherever you want, you want uh, how many uh, you want from them like uh, that depends from design more than from the admin interface and here uh, also uh, uh, we were trying to adopt how it was represented on the front end like if you have an image on the right uh, title on top and uh, description and description of the image and that layout in front then we will represent the same thing on the back end and uh, the, there is another type on the image on the left then we switch it it's basically like the rules what I've been saying about the consistency if people choose in like I want a blog with the image on the left it will appear with the image on the left and it's like it's so um, like obvious thing but it's important to not forget about that and to consider that all. And uh, of course, the most important thing that I wanted to tell about those things in this approach, you can make it all, that's a, like the greatest thing, you can make it all using only on WordPress core functionality. 
you will struggle a bit with the custom fields. I mean, uh, it's steadish work. Uh, you basically will uh, struggle one time making and understanding custom post types and custom taxonomies. But at the end, the reward is like great because you can make uh, any kind of things and then you can apply uh, on the front end complex filters. You can do whatever you want with the custom taxonomies. Like uh, you can create uh, the versatile events calendars. You can create, uh, for example, there was an example of creating the event booking calendar with the uh, booking form with the several dates, several time slots all made on the WordPress with the REST API and uh, represented with the custom post with custom taxonomies. And uh, I was using ACF Pro, uh, which is basically uh, ease your life drastically. It allows you to create those repeater fields and uh, that is called flexible fields. It uh, means that you make as many blocks as you want and choose the, uh, the layout type what I've been showing you, uh, the type of those layouts, they are <coughs> called flexible fields. So, that's basically it uh, about this approach. I was trying to get into 20 minutes, so I didn't get into much details. So, if you have more questions about the approach, about how to make those things, easy to ease your life, to ease your customer's life, and uh, so uh, please feel free to contact me. And don't forget that uh, if you make the interface which is useful and easy to use, you won't be contacted in three years. Like, you made a website, can you change those things for me? I don't understand the thing here. So that's a valuable thing, I believe. Right? Okay. Thank you. If there are any questions. Yes, we have time for one question. For one? Okay. okay. <laughs> Everyone still One at a time. I can ask something. Yeah? Uh, do you, do you uh, in all your projects, do you take into account uh, what the level of the, um, of the your client, of the level of knowledge your client has, so you can accommodate your uh, uh, interface? To, to, to the client, or, or just go always just as simple as possible? Uh, that's like both things, because uh, it's a great question, because I was referring that, that there was a project where we required a lot of, a lot of uh, more coding work to alter the default WordPress functionality, like the short codes and display of, of, the, of those things which could be made easier with the atomic thing approach of the ACF, but it was made that way uh, with, the focus, uh, with the focus on the client, on the end user. And uh, that was it. I was saying in the very beginning, focus on the end user, uh, because you basically would not want to get back to uh, old code in like five years, and uh, those websites are working for, for this time. And uh, let's get back just for, for, for a little bit for the slide. Uh, I think maybe maybe someone want to recall it and take notes. So consistency means the overall information structure and uh, uh, the pro the approach that you take uh, minds the structure of the of the interface of information. Uh, the use community flow means that uh, you are thinking about your user. If you will maintain your own blog, you can do whatever you want. If you are focusing on the uh, expert content manager, you can do more complex things and agree with them. But that's it, like uh, mm, that might be faulty role because if you give a lot of complexity uh, of flexibility to the interface, at some point it will break. Always because people are breaking things. And uh, I keep it simple and simple, it applies for you as well. I mean, uh, don't uh, overcomplicate. That's it. Like, if things could be made in a simple way that would not interfere, would not break, make it that way. That's it. Okay.
Okay, thank you. Thank you.